With the release of Ubuntu 19.10 today, I bet a lot of you guys are itching to get this installed. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the installation process for this new release. Basically, what you're going to need to do is create a bootable flash drive. I have already done that. I have it right here. And what you can do is use the utility Etcher to create that. I have a video on my channel already that shows you how to create a bootable flash drive for the purposes of installing a Linux distribution such as Ubuntu. So if you don't already know how to do that, check out that video. I'll have a card right here that will be the one you can click on to get an overview of that process. And when you download Ubuntu, you are going to get an ISO file and that's exactly the file you will feed into Etcher to create your flash drive. Etcher will erase your flash drive, so just keep that in mind. But since I've already created that, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the computer. And you can see here that it was detected when I put that in my computer here. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot and get that installed. Now in your case, I assume you're probably running another Linux distribution. Maybe you're running Mac OS or Windows. Either way, you'll go ahead and reboot, and then get ready to press the key combination for your computer, whatever that happens to be, minus F7. So I'll just get ready to keep pressing that until hopefully it'll start to boot. And now what you're seeing here is the boot menu on my laptop. On my channel, I use real hardware to show off distributions, and what you're seeing is the screen on my laptop um, basically being captured from a screen recorder. And in my case, I'm going to choose the flash drive that I just created and press enter to boot into that. And then you have this menu right here. Normally, if you don't press anything, it's going to automatically continue. In my case, I stopped that automatic process to show you this menu. The default option is try Ubuntu without installing. And what that will allow you to do is basically test out Ubuntu to see how well it works with your hardware. And that's really important. You don't want to install Ubuntu or any Linux distribution until you have verified compatibility with your hardware. Linux is not compatible with 100% of all hardware. It is the most compatible operating system that you can use, but you know there's no such thing as 100% compatibility. So what the live option allows you to do is give it a test run to see how it works on your hardware before you install it. So other options we have here, we have a safe graphics mode for the try option, which is useful if you have proprietary graphics like NVIDIA, and maybe the required driver isn't part of the default installation media on release day, so maybe that's something you have to download. After you install, you would choose safe graphics and then you would install that driver. We could go directly into the installation without live mode, but I don't recommend that because you know, you're not gonna know that it works. But if you already know that it works with your machine, this basically just speeds up the process a bit since you're bypassing some things and going straight into the installer. But I'm gonna choose the default option here. And here we are. This is the default Ubuntu 19.10 desktop. We are running from the flash drive right now, which means, you know, it, it may not run as fast as it would if it was installed on the actual hard drive. There may or may not be a speed penalty depending on how good of a flash drive you have. So it might run faster once we install it. But anyway, other than that, you want to make sure that everything works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is connect to your Wi-Fi network if you have a wireless card. So you just go up here. When you drop this down where it says Wi-Fi not connected, we click on that, we select our network, and I'm going to choose mine right here. You'll just choose yours. You click connect, you will be pr prompted for the password there. So type in my password and connect. We should see Wi-Fi light up here in the upper right corner. And there it is. Firefox is our default browser, so you can go ahead and bring that up. Make sure that your internet connection works just fine. And visit a website, uh, anything you want, just to make sure that it works. You go to my website, for example, and we can see that the internet is working. And as an added bonus of visiting this site, you can click any one of my videos to make sure that audio works. So now that we know that audio is working, you can visit a website, your internet is connected, everything seems to be fine, we can go ahead and commit to installing it. 
we have the install Ubuntu 1910 icon right here. We can simply double click that. And up comes the installer. We also have the icon here on the panel. We could have single clicked on that to open the same utility. But basically on the first screen, we're gonna go ahead and choose our language. Mine is English, that's the default for me. So I'll click continue. On the next screen, we are going to choose our keyboard layout. Mine is set currently by default to US English. That's correct, I'll leave it alone. But if you're using something else, you can choose accordingly here. And then you can type in this text box right here to make sure that your keyboard is working as you expect. At the next screen, we could choose a normal installation or a minimal installation. For most people, I recommend the normal installation. You get a web browser, some utilities, office software, games, and media players. With a minimal installation here, you only get the web browser and basic utilities. So for more advanced people or people that prefer a more lightweight installation, they might want this option. But for most people, actually this is probably the way to go. By default, it's going to download updates while installing Ubuntu. In my experience, that's not going to download all updates, but it's just fewer updates to download after you get the installation taken care of. I'm going to deselect that because that's just going to increase the recording time. And then this option here, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and whatnot. I do recommend that you guys check that box and get that installed because it can only benefit you, especially if you have proprietary hardware. I'm not going to select either of these because again, it's just going to make the recording take longer for no benefit to me, but I do recommend that you select both of those. So I'll click continue. Now we have some options here. So the default is erase disk and install Ubuntu, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And that will erase everything, and I do mean everything. So make sure that you have backed up anything that's important, your save files, your documents, music, whatever you have, before you choose that option because it's going to blank your hard drive. You can also do an encrypted install, which will basically require LVM. So that's checked now. And that will basically mean that you need to enter a password to decrypt your hard drive when you boot. That's a good idea if you are storing proprietary information for your company or personally identifiable information or something like that. I'm not going to choose that though because I just want to keep it simple for the sake of the recording. And the ZFS option, I don't recommend that for most people. But if you know what ZFS is, then you probably know how it might benefit you. That might be something you might want to check out, but it's not really recommended for prime time just yet. And advanced users can do an advanced installation partition manually by choosing this option right here. But I'm just going to simply erase the disk and click install now. And I'll go ahead and confirm it. Now here we choose our location and this will set our time zone. So I'm near Detroit, so that's good enough for me, and I'll click Continue. And then we just fill out our user information here, so I'll go ahead and fill that in. And you could keep it simple like I am, and basically you just type a password, do not forget it, or you will not be able to log in. Hopefully you have something stronger than me, I'm just basically testing right now, so I have a very easy password currently, but this is basically what you'll be asked for when you log in and also what you'll be asked for when you install software later. So I'll click continue. And we can see now that Ubuntu 19.10 is being installed. So we're just waiting for it to finish. So I'll go ahead and fast forward this and I'll be right back when it's done. All right, so we can see that the installation is done. We can continue to test it out or simply restart into our new installation. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And now it's the moment of truth. Was our installation successful? We're about to find out. So here I'm just going to remove my flash drive like it says to and then press enter. So it looks like we have a successful installation. This is the first screen you'll see when you log in. I didn't show you the login screen because my screen recorder is unable to capture that. But basically it's given you a chance to sign in and we have some options here. If you have a Google account, a Microsoft account and so on, you can go ahead and sign into those right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. 
And here we have a screen that asks us if we want to help improve Ubuntu. Now I'm assuming you've downloaded this for free, so in my opinion, it only makes sense to send that information to help them out. I don't think that's asking for too much. If you're curious what that report contains, you just click this button right here, and you can see that there's nothing personally identifiable here um, other than maybe the time zone, but other than that, it's mostly just the installation and the hardware itself. So you can basically choose accordingly here and then click Next. Location services are disabled by default, but if you are going to use any map programs or anything like that, you might want to turn that on. I'll leave that up to you. And then at this screen here, we have some popular applications that you can install. So Slack, for example, if we want to install that, we can simply click on that and then click on the Install button. We put in the same password we use when we log in and that will go ahead and install that piece of software. And we have Ubuntu software here on the left, which is essentially what this is coming from right here, if we want to install other applications. So let's go ahead and wait for this to finish. And we can go ahead and launch the software, and we can see that it works. We click Open Software, which is referring to Ubuntu software, we have this utility here where you can install applications. I will have an overview video on my channel that will explain how to use Ubuntu in greater detail, so I'll, I'll leave more of an explanation for that video. I'll click Done here, and you may see this. If you have updates, you can go ahead and install those. I'm not going to do that right now. Now one thing before I close this video that I recommend you check out before you start using this release is if you press the super key or you can just click up here to activities. You can start typing software. And we're going to click on this right here. It says software and updates, although it's a little cut off. So I'll click on that. And you'll have additional drivers. There's a tab right here. And when you click on that, it's going to search to see if you need any proprietary drivers. Now, um, right now, it's using this driver that was already installed. It actually says it's not working, but it is. I'm not sure why but um, we can go ahead and just continue with that. But basically the reason you're going in here is to see if you have anything like an NVIDIA driver, for example, if you're running an NVIDIA video card or any kind of proprietary hardware, this will give you an option to install the drivers for that. Very important that you do that and then you restart your computer afterwards and then you should have a good compatibility from that point forward, assuming that your computer is compatible to begin with. So there you go, guys, that was my installation walkthrough video for Ubuntu 19.10. So hopefully that allowed you to get your new Ubuntu installation up and running. I hope you enjoy that. Let me know what you think of Ubuntu 19.10 or Ubuntu in general in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books, and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.